Well, we know one vote tomorrow that will be critical to passing the Republican bill, and that will be the vote of the Tuesday group, a faction of moderate House Republicans that have been wary of the plan to repeal and replace Obamacare. One of their members, New Jersey Congressman Tom MacArthur, joins me tonight to talk about those concerns. Good evening, Congressman. Thanks for making it a late night with us. Well, thank you, Brad. I know you've been working uh, to try to address concerns in this bill. Are, are you there yet with you and your group? Well, I did get there. We, uh, as you said, we, we struggled through issues, but I decided weeks ago that either I was going to be part of the process to make this bill better or be an obstructionist. And I think Congress has plenty of, of uh, obstructionists, and I just didn't want to do that. So my efforts have been focused for weeks on, on working with uh, the members of the group that I co-chair, the Tuesday group, with the other parts of the Republican conference, and, and with our leadership, the, the president, the vice president, and others. And we've gotten changes that matter to people, and that's what this is about for me. I, uh, I've been through some very difficult uh, medical situations in my own family. Uh, I watched my father pay off uh, bills for my mother's death. Uh, she died of cancer when I was four. He had no insurance. He paid bills until I was in my 20s and worked three jobs. I, my, my own daughter, in 11 years of her life, she was born with special needs. And we had over a million dollars of bills in 11 years. So I have lived through this. And I know there's a lot of angst right now in America. Uh, we are working, and I'm working, to try to make this bill something that really helps people in need. And that's been our focus for the last weeks. For all the criticism about the bill, and the, the Freedom Caucus, which is the more conservative uh, group, seems to get a lot of attention up on Capitol Hill. Uh, they're concerned about the dollars. Uh, by the ads that you put back in uh, to this bill, the 60 billion, 85 billion, 15 billion, the the deficit reduction. If you look at the new CBO score, uh, this is based on the manager's amendment that Paul Ryan put in. Uh, it is a reduction now of 150 billion uh, over 10 years, but the other numbers stay roughly the same. At least the CBO score as we have it tonight. Um, that doesn't move any on the other side, does it? Well, I, I remind all of my friends, uh, and there's a lot of different views in our conference. It's a very lively conference, but this bill has got to be about people. It can't be about politics. It wasn't a deficit reduction bill. It's a health care reform bill. And today, and this number doesn't get talked about that much, but there are 23 million Americans who get nothing from the Affordable Care Act. They either pay a penalty, a tax, for not being insured, or they can't afford insurance and they get a waiver, it's 12 and a half million of those, or they just ignore the law altogether. 23 million people, every one of them, will get tax credits from this bill that will help them buy insurance. We've, we've got to help people get past this. And so I remind my colleagues that, yes, we are spending some money short term that reduces this deficit reduction, but we cannot make this transition into something that, that breaks our word to the American people and that, and that hurts the people we represent. What do you think of the president's strategy? Either you, you do it tomorrow or he's moving on? Well, I think it's not just his strategy. It's the House's uh, strategy as well. And I, I appreciate that the president's been very engaged. I've been there three times this week. He's, he listens. A lot of members have been in and out and he's talked to us. What I, what I really respect is he's engaged He's supportive, but he respects the legislature. It's been a while since we had a president that actually paid attention to the legislator and, uh, legislature and treated us like a co-equal branch of government. So I, I like what he's doing. The House is ready to vote. Uh, we don't need the president to tell us that. I, I'm glad he's uh, uh, there, too. But the House is ready. We had conference tonight, and our members want to vote tomorrow. But the reason it was delayed, Congressman, is because the votes weren't there. So now the decision has been made to go forward with the vote. If the votes aren't there when the vote comes is called, and you don't live up to that promise this time, what do you think that means for the agenda? And is tax reform hurt by that? Well, before you can get to any of that, Brett, to me the question is what does that mean for the American people? You have 23 million who have nothing today. 46% of the 
of the people who don't have insurance today have said the reason they don't have it is they can't afford to buy it. Sky premiums are skyrocketing, 50, 60, 70 percent year over year. Uh, deductibles are 8,000, 10,000. Insurance companies are disappearing from the marketplace. First and foremost, this, if the health care bill doesn't pass, the status quo continues and it gets worse. So it, to me, it's unthinkable that we don't fix this. Now, I know there's been a lot of rhetoric about repeal and replace, and some of that, a lot of that's unfortunate, I think, because this is about fixing the health care system. It's about helping people. I know there's a lot of worry and fear. I really believe once people see what, what's there, they'll realize not only do they have more resource, they have flexibility, they have choice. And so we, we've just got to get it done. Congressman, we appreciate your time. Brett, thank you.